Hey, this is David from the Cross Rifles. Today, we're doing three AR-15s in this crazy brass and copper and tarnish thing. First, I'd like to welcome you, whether you're new here or you're a returning customer. We appreciate you come checking us out. Uh, second, I'd like to apologize for the video and audio in this video uh, be because it's really, really old footage. We had just started uh, shooting video at the time, um, and I stumbled across this footage, but I thought it was cool enough to share with you guys anyways. These jobs turned out super awesome, and we ended up getting a whole bunch of jobs off these. Uh, this These pictures right here that I'm showing you are the inspiration for this. This was a, a one-off customer build. Um, and yes, I did laser all the way through that lower with the Gibbs logo. It was actually on their Instagram for a while. Um, yeah, so, so this is where it started. And these three that I'm spraying in this video are kind of where they ended up. So again, I apologize for the video and audio quality. We were serious rookies. I know you get to see my back a lot. Uh, it's a terrible angle and all that fun stuff, but I'm still gonna explain how we're doing this job and maybe you can get something out of it. Thanks for your patience. We're shooting uh, similar looking jobs today, two shot builds and a customer build. They're all kind of a bronze, patina, copper sort of thing with some other color highlights in it. Um, so we have everything hung up for three rifles, including all small parts. Uh, so there's a lot hanging. There's going to be a lot of moving uh, parts and a lot of organization as we do this. Uh, one way that I help keep it straight in my head is uh, when I'm planning jobs that are complex like this, uh, I'll lay out the Cerakote bottles and then take a picture of it. So I have uh, visual reference, kind of what's happening. Um, you can arrange the bottles like this is the this is the receivers, this is the small parts, this is the whatever works in your head. Um, I just kind of look for a color palette and then shoot a picture of it. That also helps when I have a really cool idea for a job and then uh, three weeks later when I finally get to it or two weeks later, um, I can't remember because, you know, um, concussions. Uh, I also make a list. Uh, for anybody that's helping me, um, what colors we're going to use in what order and what amounts to mix up. Uh, so we can put that out by the mixing station and have it ready to go. I also put that, um, a copy of that in here with me so I know what color is coming next. Um, we only have three guns, so my James will be shaking and mixing and then helping clean guns and I'll be shooting and helping clean guns and taking stuff to the oven and tacking out and keeping track of timers and all that. So um, we kind of divide up the work as best we can to be as efficient as possible. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show you guys how we keep things straight when we have a whole bunch going on. Um, yep, let's do it. All right, so here we are in the booth laying down our base coat on everything. Um, I have everything segregated in the booth by color so I don't spray something the wrong color. All the receivers, hand guards, magazines, and butt stocks are, uh, are base coated in gold. What I'm going for here is a brass look. Uh, not bronze, but a brass look. So. Um, Yep, we're just getting a good solid base coat on everything here. I got James mixing up more Cerakote for me as I need it. Uh, we ended up with, I think, mixing up about 300 mils of gold for this. Well, here I'm shooting magazines, and I want to point out that uh, it usually have some, some Cerakote left in the gun. Uh, it's a good idea to shoot some magazines as well. Uh, it, it's an added value for the customer, and it looks nice when you have a matching mag. So here we're laying down the copper base coat on barrels, buffer tubes, bolt carrier groups, and grips. And now we're on to small parts and those are all getting a base coat of blue titanium. Uh, you could say I still got one grip hanging up there. I decided to make that, uh, I think it's black cherry, yeah. Uh, along with all the small parts, we're also doing the charging handles and muzzle devices. 
in um, in this kind of tarnished color. So they get the blue titanium base coat as well. So this is where these jobs kind of come to life. Um, I take some hunter orange, black cherry, cobalt, uh, blue titanium, and go in and just miss some little spots of color here and there. I'm thinking about the, the job, that particular job as a whole, and deciding where I want to add some little pops of color and trying to make it all flow together well. I'm also not particularly concerned with dry spray here uh, because the whole thing, these colors are getting distressed and then it gets distressed again later. So uh, any, any little rough spots are going to be evened out. If you're paying attention closely, you'll see that I have no oven tack time on these parts at all. Uh, I just let them sit on the rack for a couple minutes and then went over it with some steel wool. I'm going to distress this again later, so I'm not worried if it gets a little rough here. Uh, I'm just trying to um, get it done quick. And uh, yeah, there was just a, a real fine mist of color on there, so I didn't need any tack time. We did blow these off with compressed air really well before they went in the oven, so we didn't have any uh, steel wool fibers stuck in the coating. Here I'm laying down a stripe of blue titanium, which is our base for the tarnish color, all the way along the bottom of this handguard. I know you can't see it right now because of my back and the ter terrible camera angle. I'm going to apologize for that again, um, but we're getting much better at that these days. There's a look at it. Here we're laying some cobalt accents on one of the jobs. and some black cherry and here I'm adjusting the gun out and getting that grip and just like before we're gonna go go ahead and distress these with steel wool with no tack time in the oven And here I'm adding my final, uh, my final coat on these. This is graphite black. I'm hitting some spots harder, and then I'm going to go back and give a kind of a fine mist over everything. Uh, I'm shooting the everything that was uh, gold and everything that was copper base coated is all getting graphite black uh, shadows and a full kind of coat you can see these parts hanging here they've got a fine coat of graphite black over everything and here we are it, they were all tacked out for uh, about eight minutes right around there in the oven and now they're coming out and getting final distress this does a good job of blending all those colors together and uh, also makes the copper look like old copper and the gold look like old brass which is kind of what I was going for Here I'm going through uh, and putting some island green on spots on the receivers and hand guards where the small parts are. So the small parts are uh, very light green and blue titanium uh, meant to look like tarnish. So I want it to look like that tarnish kind of bled on, off of those small parts onto the receivers. One of the builds had uh, tarnish all the way along the bottom of the barrel. I wanted to see how that looked. So on the hand guard, uh, I'm, I'm also tarnishing the bottom of the hand guard as well. Uh, that's the one that I sprayed earlier with the blue titanium. I'm covering that up with the island green and then no tack time at all. I'm going in with a shop towel that has a little acetone on it and I'm just kind of rolling my finger along there and padding it so I, I want to give kind of a rough look to that I want to expose some of that blue titanium underneath that island green so it has that tarnished look that I'm going for I 
I used the same technique on all the small parts. Everything that was sprayed blue titanium before gets this island green on top of it and then uh, gets acetone wiped af directly afterwards. No tack time in the oven. Hey guys, Luke here. I just wanted to come in and uh, I want to add something to this project that we were talking about this morning. So I'm going to do a little bit here too. Uh, you've been watching Dave and uh, James was helping uh, do this patinaed bronze distressy thing that Dave uh, does a phenomenal job at. Uh, we always all go through and clear coat those jobs. It just looks better clear coated. Uh, we do like to use the H series clear coat that we can bake off in the oven. Uh, but these projects have all been completely cured in the oven overnight last night. Well, I, I came in late and turned the oven off. And uh, so we're going to use uh, air cure. We're going to use MC160 uh, to coat most of these up and give it that sheen and also a little bit of extra protection. But while we were talking about that, uh, we've got a product called Gun Candy. Gun Candy is a separate product that you can buy. You mix it with a clear coat product and uh, you spray it over your project and it gives it a metallic hue. Uh, uh, it's color shifting, sometimes it changes the color completely of the substrate. I've done a custom mix here. We prefer the Cerakote, the new Cerakote VX series uh, because it goes in the H series clear coat. We can bake it right out. It seems to spray a little bit better and it's a Cerakote product, but we've got a bunch of this gun candy sitting around. I'm not gonna let it go to waste. So I took a little bit of Pegasus, uh, which does not change the color of the product you're spraying. It just adds like a, a purplish, pearlescent hue to it, a real light one. And I've mixed it with some Scorpion. Scorpion is a little bit more orange. I've actually got Scorpion on my Glock that I'm carrying today. Uh, a little bit more orangish hue, which is gonna go great with this copper patina look. I put a little bit more clear coat in there than normal so that I could thin it out. And uh, I'm gonna mix this up in a 100 mesh strainer. Or I've already got it mixed up. I'm gonna roll it through a 100 mesh strainer instead of a 325 so I can get all that metallic uh, flake in there. Uh, don't don't uh, take anything I say now as an official word, but we like to throw it through a 100 mesh strainer instead of the 325 that is recommended. And I'm gonna mist it real light I'm actually gonna mist this uh, magazine first, see what it looks like, let it tack out for about an hour, see if I really like it before I spray the whole project, just so that we know exactly what we're gonna get. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and watch me spray that. I'll get it mixed up right now, and uh, we'll cut to me just misting some clear coat on this magazine. Uh, sprayed that magazine, did a little bit of clear coat on it with some gun candy, looked good. It was not what I wanted. Uh, it, it looked really good, it looked beautiful, but I was going for something a little bit more goldish, so I added a little bit of gold. Gold ingot is a gun candy. I added it to my mix, and looking through here, it seems to appear exactly like I want. I'm just gonna go hit, hit all these parts. Because it looked so good, I just added a, a, just a tinge of gold ingot uh, from what I did that magazine in and I think it's gonna look great and you won't be able to really see it much spring uh, But you'll be able to see it once we do the pictures and we'll add some stuff uh, post editing But uh, yeah, I'll let you guys watch while I spray All right as Luke applies this clear coat I just want to point out that it makes a huge difference uh, in how these jobs look um, they're kind of dull kind of uh, hazy when when before they're clear coated and after the clear coat they really really pop i mean it it looks like metal there's a good shot of that uh receiver set there and we've got some finished pictures um at the end of this video so you can really check them out but yeah if you're if you're doing this kind of brass looking thing or copper uh, i really really recommend hitting it with clear coat afterwards it makes a huge difference in any of your jobs um Usually the last decision we make uh, before we call a job done is whether we're going to clear it or not. Well, here's a look at the finished jobs. Um, i just like to point out the, uh, the attention to detail and the planning that went into this. Plan on where the tarnish was going to be on the receivers and hand guards. Just how everything was going to look together. Um, it's important to have 
a picture in your head and uh, and kind of work towards that goal. If you think we earned it, uh, if you got anything out of this or enjoyed the video, I'd ask you to subscribe. Um, we're trying to grow the channel so we can bring you more content like this. Well, better angles <laughs> and better camera work than this. But uh, yeah, just more tutorials and, and um, we're trying to just grow the community, help people out. So leave a comment below. Look us up on Facebook. Thanks for participating. We appreciate you.